Yeah. Well, I don't need y'all. Me and Pastor Scott, I'm just going to preach to him in the back room. He'll be good enough. Hey, well, good morning. Welcome to Path Point. I'm really excited to be with you today. And um, yes, it is me and Natalie's last Sunday, and I can't think of a better way to go out than preaching and, um, and just getting to be up here with you guys. And, and, I, and I have to say, I appreciate you all very, very much. And, uh, you know, I was, I was, as I was sitting over here worshiping and looking across, yeah, sometimes I peek at you. And um, just to see you lifting your hands, to see you engaging, to see you pursuing God, um, there is nothing that makes me happier. <laughs> there is nothing that is more fulfilling than to see God's people pursuing him. And I want you to know today, you, you've already blessed me. And um, so I appreciate it. Can you give yourself a big hand clap this morning? Come on. Like you mean, like you like yourself, like maybe clap a little bit harder or something. Yeah. Yeah, even a little shout. Yeah, there we go. That person likes himself a lot. All right. Hey, while we're in the clapping mood, um, you know, I, I, we don't do this enough. And, um, and so I want to take a moment this morning and I want to honor two people who have meant the world to me and who have done so much for my life. And I know they've done the same for you. And I, can, I, I would not be on this stage this morning being able to preach. Um, and and we, me and Natalie would not be the people that we are today if it weren't for Pastor Scott and Missy, and if it weren't for the God inside Pastor Scott and Missy. And I know they've impacted you. Give them a big hand clap this morning. We love you guys. And I could do this all day, but I will cry the whole time, so I'm going to move on. Um, you know, I'm really excited to get to, to preach this first message of this series called Wired, because this is actually something that I learned when I came to Pathpoint. I did not know this before. Um, I was actually taught my gift, my gifting, or like we like to say, my giftedness right here in these doors. This was a message that really changed my life. This was a message that gave me a new perspective on everything. And so today is, is just as much a testimony as it is a message. And uh, I want to I wanna reveal to you hopefully what has happened on the inside of me. I want to reveal who God says that you are. We want to talk to you about the gift that God has placed on the inside of you. Why are you the way that you are? Come on, have you ever thought that about your spouse? Why are you the way that you are? Don't say that to them, especially husbands. Ladies, y'all can do whatever you want. So but we want to talk to you about why you are the way you are and what that really means for your life and what that means for the people around you. So let's dive right into Romans chapter 12. We're going to be in verses 3 through 10. We're going to be talking to you about these gifts. We're going to share what these gifts are. But before we get to that, I wanted to read the context in which Paul lays out these gifts. Here he is. He's talking to the Roman people. He's talking to the churches in Rome. And he's letting them know, okay, here's your gifts. But notice the context that he talks about the gifts in. Let's look in verse 3. Let's start there. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Did you know that you belong to the person sitting next to you today? Yes, that is a little weird and you may not like it. I wouldn't either, right? But we all belong we all belong to each other. Why? Because we're a part of the body. We're a part of the body of Christ. We each have a special function. We each have a special gift. Someone has a gift that you don't have. So we actually belong to one another. Now Paul gets into the specific gifts in verse 6. Look at this. He says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Verse 9, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. 
and take delight in honoring each other. Some good stuff right here, huh? I want to title today's message, Gifted. Gifted, let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. This is your moment. This is a time where we can come and pursue you. And God, I'm asking that we hear your voice. I'm asking that you speak loud and clear. Holy Spirit, lead and guide us in this session today. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding where we need it, God. And I pray that there will be revelation today, that there will be a revealing to your people of who you've created them to be. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you agree, say amen. 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 How many of you have ever seen uh, the TV show America's Got Talent? Anybody ever watch America's Got Talent? Raise your hand, hoop and holler, come on. All right, so a lot of you, yeah. Many of you have seen this show. If you haven't seen it, it's really simple. America's Got Talent is just one of those other talent shows, all right? People get up, they perform their talent, they either sing, they dance, or do really weird things on the stage, and, and they get up and perform. They have a celebrity judge panel, and they decide, hey, you make it to the next round. So it's just like any other show that you've seen on TV, America's Got Talent, right? But one of the things I love about America's Got Talent is they have the golden buzzer. Y'all know what the golden buzzer is? All right, so if somebody is like legit, if somebody's for real, all right, a judge has one time they can use the golden buzzer. They'll reach over, slap the buzzer. That sends that person all the way to the live shows, to the finale, right, where they get to perform. It's all good. They get to skip all those steps. Now, I love this show because this is what I figured out about myself, okay? I love seeing people succeed. It's like uh, the, uh, American Idol, The Voice, America's Got Talent. It's like I will sit there and cry like a little girl every single night watching those shows. Anybody, any other girls out there like me? Um, all right, okay. Right, I just, man, they just mean something to me. And it's because I love to see people just lay it out on the line, you know, lay it all out. Get up there. You can tell they're nervous. You can tell they don't have very much confidence. You can tell they don't even think they're very good. And then they begin to sing. Then they begin to perform. And what happens? The fans begin to cheer. The judges begin to stand to their feet. And that's actually my favorite part. My favorite part is at the very end, they get done. People are cheering. People are shouting. And, it, and it's, like these, it's like these people, they have this moment. They have this moment on stage where they think, oh, my gosh, I'm actually good. I can actually sing. It's not just my mom who thinks that I'm good. I'm actually talented. I can do this thing. This is actually who I am. This is who I've been created to be. And you can see in that moment, in their face, because they, they're usually crying or they're so surprised, Everything that they've done, everything that they've believed about themselves is validated in one moment. It's one moment of people cheering and be like, yep, you are good. So I want to give you just a little picture of what I'm talking about this morning. Let's watch this clip of uh, one, of the best, one of the best America's Got Talent um, guys that I've seen. It's really good. Watch this. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Nervous. <laughs> it's okay. And what's your name, please? My name is Michael Ketterer. Where are you from? Are you a singer? Yes, sir. So this is kind of a different direction, you coming on a show like this, Michael. So tell me what the thought process was. What's, what's the ambition, the dream here? Well, um, my family's my reason why I'm here. My wife and my six children. Six, six. children. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Michael, well, listen, we're all rooting for you. Thank you. Baby, you don't know what it's like 
Michael, you know what? When we find singers on these shows, is it about being technical or is it about being relevant? And sometimes, for me, it's just about being real and a surprise, if I'm being honest with you. Because you were so nervous, I was concerned for you. But I think sometimes actions speak louder than words. Come on, isn't that good stuff? Yeah, you're not the one that has to get up here and follow that. Hear me today. God is sitting on the panel of your life. And he's not there to judge you. He's not there to hit the X. But he's there to hit the golden buzzer. He's there to come and validate everything that you are to validate who you are in him, to validate the very gifts that he's placed on the inside of you, to be your biggest fan, to stand up and shout and cheer and say, that's my son, that's my daughter. And he's not just my son and she's not just my daughter. He's my gifted son and she's my gifted daughter. God is looking to validate the body of Christ like never before. He wants people to understand who they are, what they're gifted to do, what the, the talents that he's placed on the inside of them. Why? Because when people will figure that out, when God's people will stand up and be who God has called them to be, you want to talk about change in the world, you want to talk about a happy life, you want to talk about a Christian who knows where they're going and what they're doing on a mission, it's people who know who they are in him. Some of you just need to hear that this morning. Some of you just need to, to hear that part of the message that God is wanting to validate you. He's not wanting to judge you. He's, he's, he already put the judgment on Jesus. If you're a believer today, judgment's over. Grace is here. Amen. He wants you to know today, oh, you can be an encourager. You are a teacher. You are a servant. You are a giver. You are a prophet. He wants to validate everything that's already on the inside of you. He wants you to have a moment just like that guy had. You know, when I, I, I've been in ministry long enough, and, and you know my football career, I've been around gifted people enough to know this. People who know who they are, people who know what's on the inside of them, they flourish in life like nobody else. That You, you can just tell by being around them. They know, they know where they're going. They, 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 they even look and, and, and seem and talk fulfilled, don't they? I want you to know today God wants the very same thing for you. He wants that for you, which is why he wants you to know your gift. That's your first point today. God's given you a gift, and he wants you to discover it. God has given you a gift, and he wants you to discover it. You know, this is what Paul is talking to the Romans about. This is what he's talking to those believers about. He's letting them know, hey, you, you know, think about Roman culture. 
There was every vice known to man, right? They even had pagan gods that they worshiped. They even had little gods in their houses that they would pray to. They didn't know a lot about the God. They didn't know a lot about the creator. And so Paul is trying to get this across to them. Look, you're in relationship with a God who's actually placed a gift on the inside of you. He is the creator who's created you in a very specific way. And so he goes into Romans 12, and, and he's writing this, and he's, he's saying these things in verse 6, and he's starting to lay out these gifts, right? And I love what Paul does. He doesn't just say, hey, hey, guys, I want you to know you're gifted. You're, you're, just, you're so gifted. And then he was out. No, what did he do? He actually told you and told us the very gifts that God has placed in us. He didn't just say, oh, you're gifted. No, he said, you're gifted, and you're gifted with these gifts, now, we've, we've preached this and we've taught this a lot here at Pathpoint. Many of you know this teaching as the redemptive gifts teaching. Raise your hand if you've been through some of the redemptive gift stuff, if you know what your redemptive gift is. All right, many of you, right? All right, so here in verse 6, we lay out these redemptive gifts. Let's look at these together. Verse 6, it says this, In his grace, God has given us different gifts. In his grace, in his grace, in his grace. This means you didn't work for them. It means that you didn't earn them. It means you didn't do anything to get them. It was only by God's grace, his unmerited, unearned favor, that he placed a gift on the inside of you. And the Lord said it to me this way. God's given you a gift as a gift. God has given you a gift as a gift. So let me ask you this. If you didn't work for it and if you didn't earn it, can you lose it? The answer, yeah, that was a tough one. Nobody answered on that one. Like, I don't know, Pastor Keith. I don't want to say the wrong thing. No, you can't. Another scripture says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, which means you didn't have to repent to get them. You don't have to repent to keep them. In his grace, God gave them to you. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, there's one. Speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving, there's another one. Serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness or mercy to others, do it gladly. Go ahead and flip to the back of your insert this morning. If you would, would you bring up those gifts on the screen, the, the list of the redemptive gifts? There's seven of them. Look at that. Prophet, servant, teacher, exhorter or encourager, giver, ruler. That's also leader. And number seven, mercy or kindness. As we talk today, I want you to listen to God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Who is he saying that you are? Who has he created you to be? Who has he made you to be? We believe this. You're one of these seven gifts. God has placed one of these gifts. This giftedness is already on the inside of you. You know, I, I discovered early on when I, was, when I was a kid that I was gifted to play sports. Uh, it, sports were just something that came natural to me, all right? It was like it, the, all the coach had to do was like, here's this ball, do this with it. And I'm like, I can do that, all right? Yeah, no problem. See this football? Throw it at people. I'm like, yes, this is awesome, all right? Okay, they're going to be moving. So did I just throw it where they're going to be? Yeah, just do that. Okay, cool. I can do that. Kick that there. Hit that there. It was like, it was just very, very natural to me. Now, this drove my friends absolutely crazy, right? Like, because I did it easy, and it took a lot of effort on their part. And I'm not saying I didn't ever have to work, or I didn't have to, to, to work on my gift. No, I did. But it was something that was just wired in me. I didn't have to do anything to be that way. I, I, didn't, I didn't do anything. It just was there. I, I give uh, quarterback lessons, you know, every once in a while still to this day. And I was actually given one like three days ago. This is, this is a true story. He was, uh, the, I was watching him, and he was, he was throwing the ball. I'm like, you just, something's not right, and, and I can't place it. And uh, this sounds really self-serving, but this is what I had to do. I was like, here, take my phone film me throwing the ball, all right? And, I, and the guy was like, what? And I was like, just, just go with me on this one, all right? And like, so he got back, he filmed me, and then I watched myself. I was like, okay, that's how you do it. 
And I showed him, it helped him tremendously. But my point is this, I, I, it's been so natural to me. I'm so wired that way that I can't even teach anybody else how to do it. It's just there. I have to watch myself and it's like, okay, that's how you teach that. That's how you do that. You see, we get this, don't we? We understand that guy was gifted to sing. We, we understand this guy, this couple right here, they are gifted to be artistic. Me, What's the opposite of gifted? I'm challenged to be artistic, all right? Greatly challenged, all right? Artistic, very gifted baseball player, very gifted singer, very gifted man, full of faith, full of faith, very gifted carpenter. I could go down the list. I could go to each person. You know what this man was gifted to do? Preach. No doubt about it. Gifted to preach. This woman Gifted to do your job better than you can do your job, all right? She, she, if you think you're good at your job, she could probably do it better. Leader, leader. Go rulers. Another ruler, leader, right here. Redemptive gift, prophet, right? Prophet, sees things black and white, can just get, get you where you need to go. Gifted. We, see, we understand this principle. And what we need to do is take that understanding. When we see people who are athletic or who are artistic or who can sing or play an instrument, you need to understand the same is true in the body of Christ. God has done the same thing with these seven gifts. He's wired you to be this way. You just automatically can do certain things well. You're a prophet. You're an encourager. You're a teacher. Uh, you, just, you just have an ability to give. You have an ability to serve like nobody else. These gifts are already placed on the inside of you. Now, let me say this. We've been talking and we've even watched the show America's Got Talent, right? It, I want you to know these are more than just a talent. These are more than just a gift. These are actually who you are. This is actually your nature. This is your bent. This is your personality. In other words, you, you, you don't just teach, you are a teacher. You don't just prophesy, you are a prophet. You don't just encourage, you are an encourager. Are you following me today, right? Uh, this is who you are. This is who God made you to be. It's deep down in your DNA. Everything you do comes out of this. Now, I'm not going to go down, um, you know, I may leave this to Pastor Elizabeth and, and let her do her teaching part, but there are all kinds, it's, it's really cool when you get into these gifts because there are all kinds of characteristics that are associated with a person who's gifted in a certain way. In other words, rulers, all rulers pretty much act the same way. They have a lot of the same characteristics, right? Encouragers, I am, my redemptive gift is encourager. I, I, um, that, that is just who I am. But we have some, some really good strengths, but we have some really big weaknesses, right? Uh, we don't ever like to be on time. We never return phone calls. Uh, and it's really, you know, this is crazy as a pastor. I'm going to say this. It's actually not in our nature to just go and be alone with God. You want to know why that's a struggle? Because we're an encourager. So we want to be around a lot of people and just encourage all the time. In fact, we even get encouragement from being around people, all right? So to get in to the presence of God and get in by myself, it's like I'll go lock my door. i got to pray. It's like, oh, what am I doing here? God, you're here. You're here, right? Okay, I'm good. <laughs> um, I need to be with people, right? Uh, and there's just certain characteristics with each type. Why? God's wired you that way. He's wired you that way for a reason. So now you might be thinking, you might be asking the question, okay, Keith, shut up and tell me who I am, right? Which one am I? Am I the prophet? Am I the giver? Am I the servant? Am I the encourager? What am I? Well, I'm not going to do that today. Everybody say, aw. Come on, say it together. One, two, three. I used to make the youth do that all the time. I love it. All right. But more than tell you who you are, I want to talk to you about why it matters. You may want to write this down. Before you know who you are, it's important to know why you are. Before you know who you are, it's important to know why you are. It's important to know why you are the way that you are. Why do you need to know your gift? 
Why should you discover this? Why should you dig this out? What's the point? Why does it matter? Is it tied to your purpose? Yes. Is it tied to fulfillment in your life? Absolutely. Will it lead to you flourishing in life? Yes. But more importantly than that, I believe that you need to know your giftedness for others. This is the point. This is why you need to discover who God has made you to be. Yes, God loves you and he's so about you. But this is just how God works. He's so about you and he's so about others. Your giftedness is tied to other people. Look at, the, look at the very nature of the gifts. Prophet. What does a prophet do? It gets words for other people. What does an encourager do? It, the, the gift was not given to encourage themselves, but to encourage other people. A teacher teaches people. A server serves people. A giver gives to people. You get it. The very nature of the gift says it's for others. Now, here's what's interesting about this. We read, you know, the whole verses 3 through 10. If you were to open your Bible today and look at how Paul wrote this out, you would notice that the gifts are like the meat in a sandwich, all right? This is how I think, okay, about food all the time, right? You look there, it's like, okay, here's the gift. What's surrounding the gift? Look at verses 4. Look what he says. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. So here Paul is before he ever gets into your gift, before he ever shares how awesome you are. What does he say? You're a part of the body. You belong to each other. You each have a special function. Then he goes into the gifts, and then he ends with this. What does he say at the end? Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. And I love this last part. Love each other with genuine affection. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. You want to know how you honor one another? You use your gift for one another. You want to know how you love each other with genuine affection is that you actually use your gift for other people. That's loving them. That's honoring them. So you see here, Paul's wanting you to get it. Hey, before I tell you how awesome you are, before I give you all the gifts and let you know your giftedness, you need to know it's gonna, it should be used in the body and it's used to love other people. Why did Paul do it this way? Because he wanted to put you in the right posture to discover your gift. He wanted to put you in the right posture, the right mindset, the right heart set, the the, the right posture being this. This isn't about me. This is about others. So when I'm looking to discover my gift, hear me today, when you're looking to discover your gift, you're thinking, this isn't just about me. This is about others. If it was just about you, guess what? Nobody would be the giver. Redemptive gift, giver. This actually applies financially as well as a lot of other things, but it, uh, it applies financially. Who's going to just pick giver? Anybody in here going to pick giver? Giver going once, going twice, nobody. Okay, we had one or two. All right. Why? See, if you think about on, only about yourself, you're going to miss it. Discovering your gift is not just about you. It's about other people. I'm going to be a giver because that's what people need. That's how God's created me to be. That's how he's wired me to be. I'm going to be that servant, and I'm going to serve well. I'm going to serve people well. Why? Because, oh, man, God has created me to be that way. You know, it's funny. You watch that video. If you were to go back, you probably didn't miss this, but or you probably missed this. You know why he was up there singing? You know why he was up there showing his talent to the world? Why did he do it? He did it for his family. He did it for his kids. He used his gift for others. I'm telling you, when you do this, you will truly discover who you are. So we're left with that. Who are you today? Who has God made you to be? Look on the back of that insert. Look at those gifts. 
I missed a point. That last point is this. Your gift was given to you for others. Your gift was given to you for others. So as you look at those seven gifts, maybe one's already beginning to stand out to you. Maybe you would, like the example I gave with with the football analogy, maybe there's something that you, you already figure out you do, just something that's in you. I want to encourage you to let God speak to you. I can't tell you how important this is. Before you do anything else, before you listen to me or anybody else, listen to who God says that you are. Tune your ear into him. Now, we're going to help you do that. We're going to help you discover who you are. We're, we're going to do that. But who is God saying? In fact, I even, even thought about this. Maybe you can use this as a little, um, oh, what, what do you want to call it? Like a little practice round here. I, uh, let's, let's practice hearing God. God, tell me who I am, who I think that I am. Um, pick one of them. And then as we talk to you over the next couple of weeks, see if God confirms it. See if God confirms it. And we're going to help you. You know, even today, about 3 o'clock on our, our Facebook page and our Instagram, we're going to be posting a test that you can get on. You can go click on there. You can go through a lot of questions, and it will actually tell you more than likely what redemptive gift that you are. 